June shows coming up. Hollywood, June 4th. I'm at the Troubadour. It's going to be a really cool show. June 24th, I'm in Des Moines, Iowa, one night only. June 25th, headed to Omaha, Nebraska, one night only. And back at Brea, California, June 30th, one night only as well. Get your tickets to those shows and all shows at ryansickler.com. The Honeydew with Ryan Sickler. Welcome back to the Honeydew, y'all. We're over here doing it in the Night Pan Studios. I'm Ryan Sickler, ryansickler.com, Ryan Sickler on all your social media. Every week, I'm going to throw out that gratitude for you guys. Thank you so much for watching this show. Thank you for subscribing. If you're not subscribed to YouTube, it's a free way to help the show. Hit that damn button. It means everything to us over here, all right? Uh, if you got to have more episodes, I do a Patreon called The Honeydew With Y'all. And I'm highlighting the lowlights with y'all. And I got to promise you, y'all have not let anybody down. These stories are the wildest shit I've ever heard. I promise you it's the wildest stories in comedy on Patreon, all right? It's five bucks a month. If you sign up for a year, you get over a month free. There's no levels, no anything. It's just five bucks. Sign up for a year, you're getting over a month free, and you're getting the Honeydew a day early ad free at no additional cost, all right? Come out and see me on tour if I'm in your town and you're free. All tickets are available at ryansickler.com. Now, that's the biz. You know what we do over here. I always say we're highlighting the lowlights, and these are the stories behind the storytellers. Very excited to have this guest Back on the Honeydew, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Paul Verzi. Welcome back Yo, to the Honeydew, Paul. Thank you for having me, man. Dude, thank you Last for being here. Last time was here. the best. It was. I want to, um, well, plug everything first, and then I'm going to give you your, your props. Okay. Well, uh, guys, if you're in Tampa, one of my favorite clubs, May 5th, uh, 6th, and 7th, I will be at Side Splitters in Tampa, Florida. Love that place and had a great time last time I was there. So I want to thank everybody who came out and hope you guys come out again. Then I'm doing a one-nighter in Buffalo. Buffalo people asked, and I said, all right, I will come to Buffalo. I'm doing one night, May 26th, Helium. Uh, June 30th, I'll be at the American Comedy Company in San Diego, California. And for all other dates, go to paulverzi.com. Uh, check out my podcast, The Verzi Effect, which I do by myself. Well, half the time by myself, half the time with a guest. And the other podcast I co-host with Bill Burr called Anything Better. Get my YouTube channel. You could subscribe to my YouTube channel. And my new special will be on a major platform. I thought I was going to be able to announce it here. I would have loved to, but it will be coming out later. Later this spring, early summer this year on a major platform, and I will announce that on my social medias, which is Paul Verzi, V-I-R-Z-I. Dude, profesh. Profesh. Yeah. You spit it all out. Yeah, profesh, same, just same my first shit rodeo. Together. You got yeah. your shit together. You know how many first rodeos don't come in here and then sit there, well, I don't know where that. Well, I don't know where I'm at. What's my website? He's motherfucker. What's <laughs> your name motherfucker <laughs> what's my website where my man yeah, where the fuck that's so funny man congrats on the special thank you man um thank you for being back I, we were talking before the the show and I, I said uh literally up until the harlan williams episode you were the first person to come in and talk about losing a, a pet yeah man and i was very um I, look man you look i'm gonna say it, you guys are the greatest fucking fans in comedy and i was pleasantly surprised to see how much and how well it was received i mean and you said you're still getting love i want to i want to i want to take the opportunity to say to to you and the the listeners of the honeydew i was never more honestly like touched by the amount of of people that reached out about the depression that I went through in 2016, that story I told, and then having my cat give me that look and being with him for 16 years. And he was my wife's gift at her 26th birthday and this big, beautiful cat I had to take to get put down. And dude, I got letters from your listeners from all over the fucking world. Awesome. To this day, someone's like, dude, that honeydew about my depression made me feel okay about my depression. And uh, I'm a fan. For I had people going, I'm a fan for life because of that episode. That's so awesome. so thank you. Thank the listeners. Uh, like I said, I mean, I've done a bunch of podcasts and I've never, ever had a, a thing where like I could tell that I touched people, which also touched me. So it was really fucking dope, man. 
Yeah, it really was. I, I, I when you had talked about, it, I was like, this is interesting because you know I've had a few dogs over my life and got a new one now, and I just we were just talking about it. like they just they're part of your family. You have them all those years, and there's routines and habits they have. You know where they like to hide, where they like to sleep. I was telling you, I go to my uh, freezer and I go to get ice. My dog loves ice. She's right at my. She's I don't like, even. Have to, I just I, now I do a game yeah. where I'm like, let me look down. And boom, <laughs> right there, just looking at me, and I'm like, yeah. And, that's and you your miss routine. that after, yeah, because yeah. that's your routine, like. The animal becomes your routine. Your life. And yeah. and I was saying this to somebody, you know, if the other day, if you don't like animals, like if you don't, I'm not saying you have to like be an animal, like have them. Yeah. But if you just are like, fuck animals, there's, you're a piece of shit. There's something. <laughs> there, like, agree, like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. like all this thing wants <laughs> yeah. is like to be kind of loved and Unconditional be. Unconditional love this thing wants and, to give and, you. And, and dude, I don't, I don't, uh, when I was 13 years old, this is not what I'm going to talk about, but when I was 13 years old, my dad got me a, a pellet gun for my birthday. My mother, my parents got a, had a brutal divorce. And I think my mom was not happy. And my dad was like, yeah, get him a gun. Like maybe to fucking dig. <laughs> he got me a gun to dig at her and shit. And I fucking went outside. I just start fucking put the CO2. I just start shooting at birds and shit. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, I'm me too. And, and there's this like beautiful bird or whatever. And I shot this thing and it landed by my feet. And I just saw it gasping for air. It was like a blue jay or whatever. It was like gasping for air. And I just... Obviously, I put it out of its misery. I cried like a fu- I cried like a bitch, dude. I was eight eighth grade, and I'm crying like a bitch. And I just like fucking put the gun. I don't want this thing. I can't fuck, you know. And then you hear when these people like even like wild boars, which are like a problem, I yeah, guess. Yeah. But if I shot something and I heard make like uh, or, like they make noises or yeah, like ooh, yeah, uh, and, then, and then they and then they they're like and then they're like it's like in the movies where they're fucking trying. <laughs> I to- love your <laughs> imitation of a dying <laughs> boar right now. <laughs> yeah, but it's just. Yeah, it's just a thing that, uh, it's just like a fat it picture, I picture a fat dude shot yeah, a wild boy like a belly fat belly crawling yeah, just, uh, yeah, just moaning uh, yeah, uh, sweating yeah. and, and like that thing you and, and the thing is you put that thing in that position yeah. fuck that dude yeah. like life is too fuck that yeah, you know what I mean I hear you yeah so but there are certain dudes that are like oh poof and like <laughs> yeah. that's a whole other dude it is it's that's a whole, a whole other, other dude that's a whole other dude my brother's that dude oh your brother's that dude oh my See, brother used to do that shit all the time but one of my favorites was uh, this motherfucker shot a woodpecker <laughs> from our deck it was, it was driving us nuts it, gah, 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 gah. Yo, he, they sound like a machine yeah, dude yeah and he went yeah. and got his BB gun and had, we had the scope on a little Daisy 880 oh it shit it was a pellet and BB gun and he yeah. boom and, it, and you just see that bird drop and I'm like you fucking got it so we go down there, and he's like, "Yeah, look at this motherfucker. This my brother." And so it's woodpecker like this, not one of those uh, not the, like a, Woody woodpeckers that Tom Segura killed, not yeah, the endangered yeah. species Tom Segura <laughs> shot and killed. This is a little guy like this big, <laughs> and my brother picks it up, and that little motherfucking woodpecker shook it off and lit, lit his hand up. Gah, 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 no. and he fucked it up, and he threw it on the ground. And I, I knew, listen, that's what I knew. That was at the end of that woodpecker. He threw that thing on the ground. Pow! I just it, it fucking got oh oh it lit him up it fucked this whole you know what though good for him though to get those last licks that's in that's what I'm saying oh that's he was good like, gah, gah, gah. <laughs> and then this is what I laugh about that my brother was so pissed <laughs> off he's got his hair all right that's all fucked him up man it fucked no, him up yeah so he shot it and killed the thing right and then he takes the string of his hoodie out and he ties the fucking no, woodpecker up it? and I go what are you sending a what message you- to the woods right now <laughs> yeah listen what are you lynching a fucking <laughs> <laughs> he hung it okay the he next fucking- day we go back it's gone strings there and there's all these little like fox prints under it and i'm oh, laughing because i'm God. saying oh, could shit. you imagine being a fox oh, my. and just walking through the woods and you got you you'd be like you gotta be bullshitting right now there's a fucking woodpecker <laughs> you know what i mean yeah yeah and then like there's somewhere in the animal world there's an old <laughs> ass fox like it was hanging in a tree <laughs> It was hanging by a string in a tree. Like, okay, Grandpa. <laughs> That's great. He did. He killed oh, that. That yeah. thing fucked his hand up. There, there is a, there is a certain, there is a certain type of dude that's like, like that. Just like, no, we're gonna get jerky and fuck. And they, they're <laughs> yeah. just like, like the, but also they gotta gut them. These yeah, fuckers my are, dad was one of those guys. These fuckers guys. are just slice them down, take the organ, and then hang them upside down. On and, the deck. And, and we, act like a... I got pictures of deers hang, deer hanging off our deck all gutted open and drying out and stuff. And then my dad got us, he got a starter shotgun. Yeah. To see if we want to go like hunt pheasant or whatever, yeah. you know. And we just played sports all the time. We're like, man, we're just not into it. Like, it's not my thing. I don't want to go hunt deer. And she, Plus, if you're hunting and you're doing it right, 
Yeah. The one thing I hated doing was getting up early and you are getting up early and you're going out there and you're doing, if you're doing it right, you're sitting there, you're quiet. I don't want to do that shit. No. I'll fish, talk, laugh. I don't want to go hunt and be quiet to try to stalk something in the woods. Yeah. Get out of my warm ass bed. So we played sports. And then my dad was like, <laughs> he was done. Like, I think he hunted with his buddies and he liked it. But once we were like, nah, we'd rather play sports than hunt. He was like, cool. And that was it. Never hunted. And these dudes will sit up in a stand for seven hours oh, quiet. Yeah. And like, you know, be like, I'm enjoying it. I'm like, I, you know, I can't. Yeah. I don't want to be on like a jet blue with entertainment yeah. to fly. I also love my family. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's those motherfuckers like, nah, nah, nah. <laughs> my dad's a trip because my dad's just, my dad is gaudy. You know what I mean? I don't know if I've ever talked about my dad. My dad's like, you know, chains and yeah. my dad's got, my dad wear like a fur coat to go get a slice, you know? And uh, he, he said, my aunt, my my aunt, <laughs> my aunt lived in, da I'm not even joking, dude. My I, dad, believe I just saw this lady in this bad ass blue fur last night and I was like, I fucking. I want that. Uh, yeah. It looks so good. I was uh, like, man, I want to wear it. My that. dad is always like a man needs to have a watch, shoes, that's what you said good last car, time. That's what, all that. That's who yeah, my that's yeah, who yeah. my dad is. Gaudy, right? So my aunt lives in Denver, Colorado. And my dad called her up. He's like, hey, he goes, Can I hunt Ram? <laughs> Ram. He goes, I Why would you want Because he goes, I want a fucking ram head on my wall. And she goes, What? She goes, I think that's illegal. He goes, I swear to God, he goes, make some calls. <laughs> Hey, cool. See if we could go in the mountains. I'll bring this shotgun. We'll fucking get a ram. And he was like, and he was all like upset and confused that they couldn't. He goes, yeah, I don't, I don't understand. It's like, dad, they're like in date, like nobody, you don't eat ram. You, no one's eating ram. I Maybe mean, they get, are. I Somewhere get, somebody's eating ram. I get that ram. the ram head is probably like a dope thing, but like, that's like, that's some cruel yeah. shit. You know? um, um, all right. So yeah. let's talk about, well, you want to talk about uh, a cancer scare. Is that right? Yeah, so because I have one as well, and I, I know these people are sick of hearing it, but I'll tell you quickly what about mine. But I want to hear yours first. So I was probably um, well. I'll start with this in 1997. Okay, I was I, I was not a good high school student. I was very res like respectful for my teachers, and they liked me. But I was like, you know, a distracted kid. You know, I had my parents got divorced when I was young. I would lash out. I would act out, do stupid shit, get arrested, drink. Just you for got whatever. arrested? Oh yeah, I got for arrested what? like four times. Oh, just just four dumb. times. Yeah, just How dumb old? shit. Like uh, one was a one was a D D W I. One was um, you know, I was but pissing in public when, at Oneonta. My friends went to college. I, you know, I got arrested, got put in a holding cell for that. Uh, I got arrested for the you know naked in the. I, I don't know if I got arrested for getting naked in the emergency room and I ran down looking for my friend naked my dick it was bad <laughs> wait hold on you ain't gonna jump over that I don't think you told that story alright well you what know do you what? mean alright I'm gonna tell you I'm gonna tell you this is a fucking doozy I didn't play I'm gonna tell you um I never had a, I never, al no alcoholic or alcoholism, but like I was the dude that when I, when I go, I fuck it. Like You're if, if I, I go in heart, yeah. you know, we were in college and I was like, it got to the point where I was like, take beer out of that funnel and put fucking absolute in that fucking thing. <laughs> yeah, okay, and we put right. absolute and then a scoop of fucking iced tea mix and just fucking down the chute, dude. Right. So beer bong and vodka. Oh dude. Yeah, dude. Ooh. It was, yeah, dude. Could kill Yeah. We, yeah. That can kill could, you. Could yes. kill you. Yeah. So we lived downtown. By the way, I went away. I went away Where? to to uh, community college. I went away. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I went away. I'm glad you said yeah, away yeah. to community. I went in a <laughs> so did my stepson. Yeah, you yeah. did one motherfucking yeah, year. Yeah, like <laughs> I went like three hours near yeah. Syracuse to go yeah. to this bullshit school, right? To and party. is it a campus or you live there, like there, right off campus? There is a there is a campus, but we, me and my friends that that went to high school together, we got a house downtown. We got a we got an apartment. We got a house. Okay. And all the houses, the same guy had all the real estate. These two brothers, and all the houses were different colors. So there was a blue house, there was a gray house, there was a house. We were in a blue house, and um. There was a group of girls that lived at like a house near us and they were like into, it was actually a big school for soccer. Okay. So they always wanted to fuck with the soccer and lacrosse kids and never us. We were just these kids from New York who wanted to party and whatever. But one night we're fucking chilling out, we're partying and there was no soccer kids and they were into hanging with us. Okay. Um, this was the night I, we, I think, I believe this was the night we found out that, um, I think this was the night. It was around the same time that Farley died. Because okay. I remember seeing it scroll across the bottom or whatever. Mm -hmm. 
And they were, we're playing darts and we're having a good time. And it, this chick that was always into soccer is kind of like into us. And like everybody is like, oh man, they're into, they're actually into the New York guys. This is great. So one of my buddies goes to our apartment to get some, to get some weed. Okay. And, uh, and uh, all of a sudden it starts getting late. We're having a good time. I'm, it's, it's the time of the party where it's like, you're not fully drunk, but it's coming and everybody's chilling. Music is on. It's like the heart of the party. Yeah, the heart you know of the that? Party. The yeah, heart of the party. Yeah. It's like the meter is right in the middle and it's about to, right? And my other roommate comes in, kicks, almost kicks the door down and goes, dude, we got to go, dude. Chad just broke his finger running up the stairs. And I go, what? I go, how, how the fuck did he up the stair? Who breaks their finger going upstairs? He didn't fall. He was just running in this kid. So I'm like, oh, I gave the look like, no, nah, dude, I'm. Well, look at this. We can't. It's a finger. And he goes, dude, it's broken bad. It's like really fractured. We got to go to the hospital. I go, dude, I'm, I'm, I got I'm staying. So, you know, and I'm just fucking chilling, darts, everything. Five minutes later, my buddy Chad with the broken finger comes in. He goes, you fucking piece of shit. You're going to stay for some bitches. You're going to stay here for just like lose. You ain't a friend. Fuck you. And it's I'm just going, finger. and I'm going, dude, dude, what? Nah, this fucking, this is a, he goes, this is, and I'm, and then, so I'm so drunk and I feel bad. So I, I tell him, I'll be back. It's like three in the morning. I go, I'll be back. I'll be back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'll be back. Yeah, uh, I'll be. A, by the way, by the way, I wanted you to know this something. I had no plans on telling the story. Everything I'm telling you in this story is 100 percent true. I believe 100 percent true. Everything down to every detail. So I go. I, I'll be back. Don't worry, you guys will be up. You be up. So we're in the car and I'm in the back. My buddy JB, rest his soul, he's driving. My buddy Chad with the with the broken finger and I'm sitting in the back and it's a it's a quiet blizzard. Okay, blizzard. It's coming down, but it's that nice, quiet shit. Mm, I love that. And I'm looking. So silent. It was outside. silent, yeah. and we couldn't go too fast. And we're going to the hospital uh, in in Little Falls, New York. I'm sure somebody will know this story. This is just, and and I'm looking around, and the, the 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 drunkenness starts to hit. I'm in the back, and like the snow's looking different. I'm seeing trails of shit. I might have been high too. I was. It, it just. I'm. I have no business being out. And we get to the emergency room and I'm starting to get angry that I'm not at the party, right? And they bring Chad in to get his finger wrapped and me and my boy JB are sitting in the fuck, we're sitting in the, in the emergency room waiting room. And I just start going, fuck this fucking this bullshit. Are you gonna fucking break your finger going up? So I should be at this party. I start talking to myself. I go into the bathroom and I start pissing all over the bathroom, right? And I start ripping magazines and I start throwing it, right? So he goes, oh, no, no, I, I missed one part. <laughs> when we were walking and I jumped on the hood of an ambulance and acted, <laughs> like, and, and act, yeah, I acted like I was in Die Hard. I go, yo, yo, look, look. And I like held <laughs> on. Now you're going and into it, like, the like, and, and he goes, dude, dude, you can't, you can't, we can't do that. Come on, come in, come in. So like he got me off the thing and I go in. I start kind of pissing in the toilet, then out of the toilet. And then I start ripping magazines and I start throwing magazines and I'm angry. And my buddy's kind of just laughing. But Paul, you got to stop. You got to stop. Head to God, I go, you know what? Fuck it. I get stark naked. What? I get naked and I start running. Wait, I'm going to stop you for a second. Are you a guy that gets naked? Had you ever done anything in, in, like in, this In before? high school, I used to be the guy that would get naked at a party okay, sometimes. Right, okay. Yeah, so you know what I mean? This ain't your first rodeo yeah, I used either. To like, I used to like steal imaginary second, like drunk at, like in the and rain. And sprint and by. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. do that shit. I had shit. that friend too. Yeah, yeah. Just streak the party so, real quick. Like, what the fuck was that? Yeah. yeah. Keep his cigarette in too and just yeah, sprint yeah. by. Yeah. So, so, so my buddy's so going, So were what you the in fuck? the waiting emergency room? I'm in the waiting room in the emergency room in Little Falls, New York, and I got naked. How and many I said, people Fuck in the this. room? Was, I, that may, no, it was, it was me, my buddy, maybe someone else, but nurses were yeah, all the around. People the working nurses, there, yeah, of course. oh yeah, there was like a handful of nurses. And I just start running. You're I, naked. I, I'm naked. And I start running down, popping and looking for my friend. And I fucking pop in a room and I see my buddy Chad, and he did that delay where he goes, Wait, dude, what the fuck? <laughs> And I go, come on, we're dancing. And I started making my, you know, I'm doing the whole fucking thing. And I go, come on, the nurse wants to dance with me. And I go up to the nurse and I start trying to dance. Naked. Naked, dude. And she's going, somebody, I was, somebody call the cops. Somebody. Somebody call the cops. And my buddy's going, dude, get the, my butt, buddy Jimmy's, get your fuck clothes out. I gotta go, get him out of here. My buddy Chad, who's, he forgot his finger was broken. He's laughing so hard. He can't believe what he's seeing, right? I can't he's, 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 he, he, can't, he, he can't He can't believe it. So I'm going, come on, she's dancing. And like, I tried to like, I didn't like grab her hips, but I did the thing where I was like, let's, she's like, somebody call the cops, somebody call the cops, right? So I grab my shit, I run out, I get dressed. My buddy is like, we're out of here. We're going to be in the park. We're going to be in the parking lot of this fucking place. Now it's still snowing. 
Okay. And I put my things on, I put my, my everything belt buckle back on and we're in the car and we're sitting there and JB just goes, <laughs> JB just goes, rest his soul. He lost his life, unfortunately. And he goes, uh, he goes, yo, you want to do donuts? And I go, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of no, I'm fucking I'm hammered. Of course. And he starts whipping around. He's got a Nissan 300, and he starts whipping around this parking lot. And all of a sudden, we see blue and red lights. Whoop, 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 whoop. And we're, and, You're doing this in the parking lot of a hospital. And almost hitting the fucking poles. <laughs> And after no, the but, worst but, place after, to do get, all this after shit. getting naked, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. And, and this I, is how you go. This is your cop, grand finale. Cop comes out. He goes, "Both of you, get out of the car." And dude, I was so hammered. I was so hammered. My memory. I was, which one of you pieces of shit got naked in this hospital? I swear to God, I go. Someone got naked. Man? That's fucking disrespect. <laughs> Who the fuck? And he goes, he goes. I bet you it was you, you piece of shit. Arrests us. We get arrested. For I got like public whatever the, whatever the charge was, gets arrested. My buddy goes, dude, I'm getting arrested for laughing at you. I'm getting I'm being arrested. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting arrested for, for for laughing at you. He's like, you're lucky I had bail money to like. So our bail was like whatever a hundred something bucks, and then we show up to court. Courtroom's packed like a movie. It was like it was like a, it was like a fucking <laughs> it was like a fucking whatever a time to kill. It was fucking. <laughs> packed. Yeah, I was waiting for fucking Matthew McConaughey's final, yeah, yeah. and picture she's white. Like, there was yeah, that right, shit, right? Yeah. And I'm nervous, dude, and there's a big bailiff. I swear to God, there's a big bailiff sitting there, and I'm nervous, dude, and he's going towards me. He goes, uh, Mr. Verzi, please step to the, you know, and I step up, and he goes, okay. He looks, he's looking at the thing, and he's going, okay, so... I see uh, Mr. Ver have a report here that says Mr. Verzi exposed his bare buttocks in the Little Falls emergency room. When asked, why are you naked? Mr. Verzi's reply was, my belt buckle came undone. And, dude, <laughs> and the, I swear to God, the bailiff just goes, <clears throat> dude, the bailiff, the bailiff broke. He just That's goes, awesome, yeah. and he just goes, Mr. Verzi, he goes, if you're ever, if I ever catch you doing this in my town again, I'm going to throw you in jail for 30 days. And I said, Your Honor, you'll never see me again. And that and, was it. And that was it. Fuck yeah. That's the truth. That's a great fucking story, dude. 100% true. Man, your friend, though, a little bit of a bitch with that finger. Should have let you stay over there. I I'm mean, glad we got the story out of it. Yeah. But, man, I, I snapped my ankle tendons and everything. My brother barely slowed down <laughs> in the front of the hospital. I was like, get out. And they just left my ass. They didn't come in with me and all that shit. Yeah, yeah. I think it a was finger? more. I think it was more like, yo, if we have to leave, you have to leave. Yeah, that's exactly what it was. <laughs> if we're a, not getting pussy, <laughs> you ain't getting pussy. <laughs> but what what led us there? What led us there? Because uh, well, we were talking about being in the hospital. You sp had a scare. <laughs> yes, yes. So so anyway, um, I wasn't a good student in in, in school, but because but when I wanted to be, I was. So like I had a teacher one time go, hey man, you don't belong in this English class. You belong at your essays are really good. Don't embarrass me. I'm going to put you in this good class. And I went from like a C student in the lower English to a B plus student in the higher English. Mm -hmm. So she believed in me, and mm -hmm. and and that that's the type of student I was. But so towards the end of high school, I needed to like I was getting close. To like, am I going to graduate in four years? And I wanted to. One day, my mother, I wait. Hear, I'm sorry. Were you worried you it would take longer? I was worried that I was. I was worried that like with my grades, like I didn't want to be somebody to go. I didn't want to go to summer. I definitely yeah. didn't want to do five years, but right. I didn't want to go. I didn't want to go to summer school, which I never had to. Thank God, I ended up passing and getting through it. But one day, as a senior, I hear my mother from the bedroom. I hear either what is hysterical crying or hysterical laughing. And uh, unfortunately, it wasn't the latter. I go in, and my mom is just like pale, and she's not really. She's not really feeling good. And and uh, come to find, she's like, I was like, I'll stay home from school. And she's like, no, go to school. And she's, I, I didn't like school. I'll stay, you know. And she yeah, was like, she's yeah. like, no, go to school. And like fourth period gym, they were like, listen, your mother's being rushed to the hospital. I don't want to scare you. I go home. It's like a movie. That same morning? That same day. And I see, true. I pull up my street and I see troopers and I see fucking ambulance. It's like a movie, dude. Like, And they're all at my house. And my mom's best friend who was there at the time, it was like, uh, she's all right. She's in the thing. I pull my mom. My mom looked bad. And my mom goes, oh, you want me to come in the ambulance? She goes, no. She goes, I don't want him in the ambulance with me. Uh, I was like, all right, I'm going to go to my job and tell him I can't work. Because I, I worked at a pizzeria. So I'm going to go to the pizzeria, tell him I can't work today. And I'm going to come right up to the hospital. Found out my mother like threw up so much blood in the hot in the in the ambulance like like they said like 40 percent of her blood she was just whoa yeah dude she was like gonna she gets to the hospital they ask her if she wants a priest or a fucking that's where it's just hemorrhaging so then they fucked up and said it might have been like a bleeding ulcer it was a tumor she had a tumor in her stomach and it was a very long story short it was a very rare cancer 
And um, she was, after four surgeries, taking it out and being cancer free, you can't do any more surgeries, right? Like they take it out, cancer free. All of a sudden, something's growing back. You cut it out, take it out. You can't after so many times. So then they find little <laughs> spots all over my mother's liver and my mom's in like stage four now and it's really, really bad. And two months before my mother's last relapse, the Dana-Farber Institute in Boston came out with a test drug for people with leukemia. My mother didn't have leukemia, but it was working on what my mother had. They do a test study of 100 people. It works on like, like 26 of them, like really well. My mother's one of them. Then it dwindles okay. down to 10, and my mother's one of them. Really? Okay. My mother is alive today. And After stage four. Stage four cancer, a test drug. Uh, saved my mother's life. This Dr. Dimitri, shout out to him. Shout out to the Dana Farber Institute in Boston. Yeah. Saved, saved my mother's life. This is, you said, 97? Her first cancer was 97 when the initial tumor. They took it out then a couple years later and then when it started to spread a few years later. So you're talking like close to, years. you're talking almost 25 years and my mother's here. She got to see weddings and grandkids and, you know, the, me the medicine beats her up a little bit. It beats up her immune system but my mother is like, all the cancer is kind of dead or like not, like has completely not growing. you know you're not growing but like almost like dormant thank god knock on wood it stays so mom? my mom is now my mom is 71 so she's been was, dealing so, with this since, since her late 40s so, yes yeah, so, so so yeah and just so so now i'm a hypochondriac and i think p part of that played a part okay so i like passive doctors <laughs> You know, you know that Seinfeld episode. Oh, you're nuts! <laughs> Cancer, you're nuts! Get out of here! Yeah. I want, and my doctor knows that. Mm -hmm. I want a doctor to look at me and get the fuck out of here, man. Yeah. You know. So this one, this little stretch of time, I had this really weird abdominal issue, like by by where my appendix is, right? And but it was weird. It was this awkward ache. It was really weird, man. And a couple days, I'm going. This is, a, and, and and I'm going. I was like, I just need to go to the doctor. So I go to the doctor, and my doctor knows my past, knows my mother. And he goes, let me let me see. If this is your appendix, it's going to hurt when I push it. He goes, but when I let go, it's going to hurt more. Okay. And he pushes it, and it hurts, and he lets go, and it doesn't hurt at all. And he's like, I see that he's like, he's like perplexed. He's like, what the fuck? What? So he's trying to do it, and he's, and, and he's like, all right, you know, hold on a second. And he walks out of the room, and halfway out of the room, he goes, you know what, Paul? He goes, I gotta, I'm going to just send you to the emergency room, and I want them to take blood because something's not right. And I, that was, and, and that's so, and I, I go, what? And he goes, yeah, something's not. So I go home and my mom goes, what's wrong? I go, they want me to go to the hospital right now. And, and she goes, you, my mom thought I was fucking with her because she knows that I get nervous about shit like that. I go, no, ma, he said to go up there and, and to go check. So she's fucking, she's been through all her shit. Yeah. And I know where her, where her mind went. I get to the hospital. They make me drink this fucking water that tastes like some chocolate shit. <laughs> and. I'm drinking it and they, they go on a scan and they go, we found, a, <clears throat> we found a mass there. Shit, man, I'm reliving this. We found a mass there. And I'm going, okay. And we want to go to surgery tonight. 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 So my mother comes in and my mother was trying to play cool mother, but I could tell my mother was on some like, this was fucked up. So she's like, it's all right. I'm telling my, call my brother. I'm, Dude, I'm going to surgery. Like, in, I'm going to surgery at midnight. And they were like, what? I go, yeah, they did all tests all day. There's some mask there. They don't know what it is. I'm going to surgery tonight. And now I'm like, fuck, dude, they're wheeling me in. They're putting shit on my head. I'm just like waiting there. And, um, I go in for the surgery and I remember waking up. I went in nervous too. And I, and, and it was big abdominal thing, you know, a big scar I have and not huge, but you know, um, and I wake up and I never forget, I come out of the shit and I come out and I'm looking up and my mother goes, it's done. They took it out. It's okay. It's, you know, it's done. And then she didn't say anything else. And I'm going, what, what? And I'm coming too. And I go, what's up? What happened? She, well, they found something that, that they're going to test. And dude, it was like, all right. Did you get you know, to see it? I didn't get to see it. No. Um, but I found out that they told my mother, fuck, dude, I'm reliving this. They told my mother we ain't seen anything like this before. Like there's an effect, there's something like we haven't seen. And it's the same thing they told her. So no. she, so, and, and I, and I kind of got wind of that. So I'm laying in the hospital and they're like, look, you need to be here after that surgery for at least four days. Okay. And we're going to do biopsy on this thing and test this thing. And dude, I'm laying there and. Oh, every second has got to be excruciating. Every fucking second. Okay. And, uh, and, and then you're thinking this could be your last 
now I'm days a, and you don't even know what to fucking do with these minutes right now. And and I'm I'm yeah, man. And I I've never talked about it this detailed. And I had about a, two years into comedy, I was doing the urban circuit, black rooms, and I was I was doing some eight mile shit and I was killing. I was doing well. And I remember like I would be, I would like at night, I would talk to God. I would be like, look, man, like, because this was when I knew that it was just more than like bringer shows and open mics. This is like, this got to a point where I was like, even though it was only like two and a half years, three, maybe three at the time, it was still like, like I was doing shit. I was like, I was making, I was like three and a half. Yeah, I think now that I think about three to three and a half years in and I was like doing contests and doing things and I was like making a little bit of noise in the New York scene for a guy that's not quite in the clubs yet, if that makes sense. Yes. And I remember being like, if you can just get me through this, I just want to get through this. I would do, I, I was literally like laying, I get like a morphine drip every once in a while with pain. But I remember, and I'd watch TV at night and I was alone at night. My mother would be there every morning. That's what I want to ask. Who was allowed to come see you? So it was, it was literally like everybody else. And my, my parents divorced. My father was away. Like, so, so, um, and I, I didn't really, my father and I's relationship at the time, it was like, we're always cool, but he was just like from afar loving me. But it was like, my mother was there every morning and that's what it was. And every morning I woke up, she was at the edge of the bed. But we, you know, you know, and not, not that I'm some like big religious, but I, you know, I was praying, be like, hey man, I, I just, whatever I, whatever, if I can get through this, I'm going to make the best of this. I'm going to make the best of comedy. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to take comedy as far as I could take it in my life if I get through this. You know, and this is fucking 20 years ago. And I'm going, I, I you know, I just need, I, I, I want to, you know, get through this. And I would watch TV at night, but then I would, there were hours alone. The hours alone would be when my mom would kiss me goodbye, like after like the dinner time, early evening, sun going down. And I'd be in the hospital alone. And I would get visitors, but I was alone, dude. And I was like, What's going if, this is can if this is cancer, then my mom had it. Um, you know, my friend, my friend in the hospital that I said that passed away, he died from cancer, cancer and his mom had cancer two years before him. So there was all around me. And and I, and now they're looking at this thing. And How big was it? Do you remember? Did they say? I think when they said they took it out, but it, what it was, was so, so, so day, I remember there was a couple embarrassing things that happened. Like the nurse was always nice. So she had to take the catheter out of my dick. Dude, and oh, my dick, but yeah. And like, you know, and, 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 and hearing it. yeah. And you know, and your dick is fucking baby dick yeah. when she's coming in and you want to be like, Hey, just that so dick's you know, crawling. <laughs> <laughs> <That dick's> crawling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And she's like, I'm going to pull it out. You know, and pull it out. I'm going to tell, this is, this is the, one of the funniest things that has ever happened. Well, I'll, I'll get to the story. For, I'll, let me finish the story. Then I'm going to tell you one of the funniest things that happened with my neighbor in the hospital who came okay. in the hospital. Cause it's one of the funniest things I've ever seen. So, um, every day my mother was there and the doctor. Now, one thing that was good was the day before we were going to get the main biopsy results. The doctor came in and kind of gave an indication, which is like as legal as he can do it. He gave an indication, oh, the preliminary things don't look so, but look all right or something. He did something that my last night there alone gave me, like watching TV, a I had a little courage. bit of hope. hope. I had a little bit of hope, you know, and and I'm sitting there, I'm like, oh my God, when I wake up tomorrow, they're coming in with tests to tell me like, you know, what they're doing a biopsy, they're looking at this thing. And- uh, Isn't it fucking crazy that oh my at God. that point in time, somebody had already looked at your shit and some- human out there no. had all the answers yes that you're laying in that bed dying to fucking know yeah some asshole could have you know, know some guy could have just been way. like jet skiing in miami yeah, and be like, we'll yeah. tell him monday the guy's got a fucking yeah. pina colada <laughs> i'm sitting here fucking like, biting my fingers i got a fucking catheter like, in my dick <laughs> This guy, this a bitch on the fucking back. listening to Flow Rider while he's fucking <laughs> while the fuckers listening to Flow Rider spinning out, going to eating sushi and shit on a yacht. And I'm With fucking, your results, <laughs> yeah. Tell the Mersey kid we'll tell him Monday. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Hey, get that bag of blow. That's we're going to go that's fucking. That's definitely how life yeah, works. Yeah, yeah, we're going to go whale watching. Get yeah, that blow. we're whale watching. You're just in there like, what's happening? <laughs> yeah. okay. One of the greatest fucking surgeons is just fucking whipping down. Right? Oh, God. That's the best. That's the best. <laughs> so 
If you have multiple credit card balances each month and are only paying the minimums, barely making a dent in your credit card debt, it can be discouraging. Upstart can help you pay off your existing debt quickly so you can feel like you're financially getting ahead. So whether you're paying off your credit cards or consolidating high interest debt or funding personal expenses, over a million people have used Upstart to get one fixed monthly payment with a clear payoff date. Upstart knows you're more than just your credit score. So rather than looking at your credit score alone, Upstart's model considers other factors like your income, your employment, and other information provided in your loan application to find you a smarter rate for your loan. You can check your rate without impacting your credit score in just five minutes for loans between $1,000 all the way up to $50,000. And you can even receive your funds as fast as one business day after accepting your loan. Find out how Upstart can lower your monthly payments today when you go to upstart.com slash honeydew. That's U-P-S-T-A-R-T dot com slash honeydew. Don't forget to use my URL to let them know I sent you. Loan amounts will be determined based on your credit, income, and certain other information provided in your loan application. Go to upstart.com slash honeydew. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. Life is full of twists and turns, stress, changes, grief, moments of growth, and moments where we feel like we're taking a few steps back. And it's important to show up for yourself through all the struggles that life can bring. BetterHelp Online Therapy is here for the twists and turns and will assess your needs and can match you with your own licensed professional therapist in less than 48 hours. It's not a crisis line. It's not self-help. It's professional therapy done securely online, and the service is available for clients worldwide. You can log into your account anytime and send a message to your therapist. You can schedule weekly video or phone sessions so you won't ever have to sit in an uncomfortable waiting room as with traditional therapy. BetterHelp is committed to facilitating great therapy therapeutic matches so they make it easy and free to change therapist if needed. It's more affordable than traditional offline therapy and financial aid is available. Visit betterhelp.com slash honeydew. That's better H-E-L-P and join the over 2 million people who have taken charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional. In fact, so many people have been using BetterHelp, they're recruiting additional therapists in all 50 states. Special offer for the Honeydew listeners. You're going to get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash honeydew. That's betterhelp.com slash honeydew for 10% off your first month. Now, let's get back to the do. So the last day, I, I so so that last night, I had a little hope. Mm-hmm. That's so funny you said that. Well, uh-huh. so, so the last day, I had a little hope. So I wake up and and for the first time out of all the days, my mother's not there. For, she wasn't sitting there. Every day I woke up, she was already at the edge of the bed sitting. I wake up, day to find out, day five, and I'm going, uh, my mom's not here. She was probably like right down the hall coming, but she wasn't there. And I go, oh my God, this is a day. Like 30, no, less than 30 minutes later. Uh, no, t- five minutes later, my mom comes in. Hey, sweetie, how you doing? It's going to be fine. No matter what it is, it's going to be fine. My mom was, you know, dope. It's like, whatever, you know, she went through so much shit. So she's like, whatever it is. Whatever. Yeah, you're not going to tell her yeah. stage four fucking cancer. Yeah. It's not going to be okay. Yeah, right. yeah. And uh, she she says, um, it'll be fine, whatever it is. And then like half hour later, me and my mom are having a good conversation. Two doctors walk in with a fucking manila folder and a piece of, nothing was more important in my fucking life than that piece of paper that this fucking surgeon was Already holding. Already had an answer. I mean, that, I mean, walking down the hallway had an answer. <laughs> Right, right. He went from the jet skis to the right, soda machine yeah. to the and and I, he's like, he's like, this fucking Doctor Pips ain't you know. This goddamn machine gets stuck every time I fucking you. Like, Get out of here! What's going on with me? So, uh, so he comes in and he goes, uh, "I want you." He smiled and he looked at me and he smiled and right when he looked at me, I kind of I kind of got a good indication. He goes, "We did a biopsy on this thing five times to check it," and he says. Um, what it is is you have it, a, you, a diverticu- there's something called diverticulosis. Usually older men get it on their left side. I had what diverticulosis is it's a little canal in like the intestines that things can get stuck in. Okay. That's why people with diverticulosis cannot eat seeds. You can't eat seeds. You can't eat popcorn. All those things that have the things that could stick or a seed can get in there and fuck it up. And clog it so up. So I was then- I was born I my thing was on the right, which is rare. Something got stuck in there, got infected. They okay. took it out. They also did take out, they were like, hey, we were there. We took out the appendix just because we, they just took out my appendix because right. it was like, it was there. So they took out my appendix. They took out this infection, which was a diverticulosis, like really flare up of a very certain specific area. 
They told me I, I would be all right. He did say, you got to watch what you eat. This could flare up again later in your life. Found out now, come to find out my father has diverticulosis, so he can't eat things like that. But mine just happened to be on the right side. Uh, they taped me up, and a day later, I said, Ma, can I go to uh, the Yankee game? And she was like, Paul, you, you, you're you going to be fucking leaking at Yankees. So we, but I went with my brother, and it was never, it was one of, it was, it was literally the first real life second chance that I really, like, I felt like I had. And so when anytime somebody says to me anything about, like, because somebody didn't get the news I That's got. That's right. Somebody didn't get that news. So how dare I They're not- They're not even here to tell that story not, anymore. Right. So how dare I not do anything I want to do? How dare I, you know, anything that, that somebody wishes they could get out of that fucking hospital bed and do. Um, so so that one that one really, really uh, bothered me. But one of the funniest parts about this story is an older man, Ryan, I don't even know if I could tell you this because you're going to fly off that fucking- <laughs> Dude- an older man is at the curtain, you know, next to me. And day three of this ordeal, I hear, hey, young man. And I go, yeah. He goes, yeah, they got you. And we're just talking. Well, they get to the food. How's the food? He's just talking to me, right? And he just goes, yeah, I got it. I'm stuck here, man. And, and I'm going, yeah. And he goes, yeah. He goes, you seem like a nice kid. You'll be all right, this and that. And he goes, yeah. He goes, I can't leave until my testicle unswells. And I go, And I go, I go, what? He goes, yeah, I got this thing. He goes, yeah, I got this thing where one of my testicles, you know, it blew out. And, oh, uh, it blew out. And he goes, he goes, I got one, one of my testicles really swollen. I'm not gonna let me leave the hospital until he goes. It happened once before. He goes, this, you know, and I'm, I'm going, all right. Like I'm just trying to. Now I don't know if he's fucked up. Right, right. You know, like I don't. He could be there, all He meds, could be all fucked. He could be, he could be right. Yeah. All I know is he's older and he's my neighbor yeah. and he's trying to be friends with me and he's very nice and he said something like, oh, I see the people coming to visit you. That's nice. Like he was nice, but he's saying this. So a day and a half, me and this guy talk more. Hand to God. He go I come out of the bathroom. He goes, Come here, you gotta look at this thing. <laughs> Sickler, I swear to you. Did you on, go look? Uh, everything. Yeah. I, I, I swear I to you, holy. On anything holy, this man opens his thing. His fucking, if my memory's correct, his left testicle looked like a legit softball. Get the fuck out of that bitch. It, it looked like, it, oh, it, and, and it's, it looked, and, and I just go, and I just, I couldn't look. Yo, yo, that I, is I, mad. I couldn't, I couldn't look, mate, like, like between baseball and salt, so, like it was probably, it was probably, <laughs> it was probably between, the guy would have loved it if it was a pool ball. God. He would have loved it if it was a pool ball. This was between Major League Baseball and uh, and legit softball. And I, I couldn't look long, but I saw like, you know, you see like the fucking purpley fuck. And he's just like, yeah, so this it. thing's got to go down. And I'm like, I'm like, yes, the fuck it does. I wouldn't let you, I wouldn't let you forget, forget leaving the hospital. I wouldn't let you in. You shouldn't be home. Like, dude, I, I can't. <laughs> I, Ryan, I can't believe it's possible. What I saw, I can't believe a testicle could blow out to like yeah, that. Yeah, it's scary. I, I'm going like, what? Like, what's in that? What? Why? Is and this and his first rodeo. And, and, and he's going, yeah. I think he was acting like, yeah, hey, here we go again. Yeah. So he had some clear testicle <laughs> shit. But um, I'll never forget seeing that. And me and my mom had a good laugh because I told her, and it was actually it eased me. Yeah. It eased me a little bit, even though it was so ridiculous. Because like, even with everything going on, I'm like, dude, I'm like, mom, Come here, I'm like, you gotta, yo, see, you gotta this see this. This guy's got a ball like you have never seen before. And and that kind of loosened it up, but he was very nice and he was happy for me when I left. But um, that changed my life. And the reason that <clears throat> the reason that changed my life is because I I learned a lot at 23 or however I w was at the time. I learned a lot that like the, what we said before, somebody's not getting that news, and 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 somebody gets the bad news there, and they can't go on with the comedy career and live their dream like I've been able to. So, and and I've also now have ammunition for my children when I tell them things, and they say that they're scared, mm -hmm. you know. And you're like, well, look, you know, everybody's scared, but here's what you could miss, and here's what can happen. And some people unfortunately get taken away quicker, and it's not cool. So so for me, that was that was something that like as I was coming to your show i'm like i haven't really relived that because like if i ever and i mean if i wrote a book i would name it four days because the emotions and my old having family like my older brother four days in a ball fall, fall. <laughs> <laughs> talk about busting a nut i don't know the next time that guy jerked off i don't know what would bet I, <laughs> I bet you he put a he probably took the fucking plaster off that motherfucker <laughs> 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 
<laughs> it would have been a jackass I movie. I hope it wasn't a girl in front uh, of that thing. Uh, yeah, yeah. But, but the, you know, the weird thing was when you're in a hospital, this is one thing that, that – um, I think everybody goes through and notices when you're in a hospital and there's tubes and there's a big surgery and there's news coming, people look at you different, even your family. Like even without them knowing, like my mom, my mom held it together, but I, the fear is there. Then I had siblings kind of like want to be in and out because they didn't like to see me like that. But so also they were scared to death for themselves. Like they see you and like, fuck. They're scared for themselves. themselves They're also like, you, I don't like seeing my right, brother like yeah. that. So like they would come in and give the love and I'd be like, oh, I'm going to go to the gift shop, yeah. you know, and just, you know, and, and I, I saw that with some people. And then you had people come in and be like, you know, you, you're going to be all right. Oh, we'll pray or like, so, so it was a lot of, it was a lot of different things, but it, it really was a learning experience and it was one of the, the scariest things that I went through. So, um, I know exactly what you mean. I had that gratitude moment myself. I, I won't. I'll spare everybody the long story again, but I'm telling you. So, in, yeah, I was 42. I went through this crazy health scare. I had kidney stones. Then my legs, both legs started clotting. Like, it just kept getting worse and worse. And Fuck. my doctor's doing all these blood tests. And he's like, I'm sending you to an oncologist. Don't freak out. I'm like, I am freaked out, though. This is a blood, uh, blood cancer doctor I got to go talk to. So I'm seeing him, and he's like, I don't normally see legs, both legs clotted like this aggressively. So, dude, homeboy gives me his fucking cell phone number for the weekend. <laughs> and I said, he goes, I don't want you to be scared. I go, I am. I go, I, you just give me your fucking this personal. Is a blood, you're a blood cancer doctor. Give me your personal self. Told me hit you up this weekend if I have any problems. I'm scared to leave. I'm scared to leave. Oh my god. And then you god. probably know this. It was for me when they did the test, the blood test. It was a two week wait. So you got rushed in for an emergency surgery. So you found out in mean, like four, four days. Or five days. Yeah. I didn't have a procedure. So I got to wait two, two fucking, fucking weeks. weeks. And I'm freaking the fuck out for two weeks. Like living life, too. Yeah. Cause they're mentioning leukemia. They're mentioning lymphoma. And I'm like, Jesus Christ. And I'm trying to let I'm a single dad at the time. I'm trying to get through this. I mean, we had a we had a live crab feast back in the day at the Hollywood Improv with Anna Ferris. And that day, that morning, for hours, I was in the hospital and they were flushing my um, huh. fluids and trying to figure out what the fuck's going on with me. And it took six months. And I walk in. Whoa. And there's this nurse. And she goes, how do you feel? And I said, I'm scared. Like, I've been scared for two weeks. I don't know what everyone's about to fucking tell me. I have no idea what I, what's how my life is going to be when I walk out of this office today. Wow. And she goes, well, I'm not supposed to tell you, but I'm going to tell you. You're good. You're fine. I was like, oh. Oh, my God. And she goes, how do you feel? I go, I just feel a huge relief. And she said, let me tell you something. I'm telling you this because every day it's my job to tell people they have cancer. Today... I got to tell someone they did it. Oh, my God. And she goes, you need to see that from – I'm getting chills Dude, now. Dude, I just she's got like, the chills. She's like, you need to see that from my point of view. And I'm telling you now, go celebrate. Go celebrate life. You got another chance. And I was like, man, I'm still – that's and, and, fucking unbelievable. And to hear that, like, yeah, that's yeah. your job. And every day you're going numb to telling people you have cancer, you have cancer, You're this is where you work. And today you get to tell someone they don't. She was stoked. Oh, my God, dude. That's like – So that's, I was like – And then since 42 to now, I have put my foot on the motherfucking gas and was like, fuck it. I'm not looking back. We're and living. I, and I, that's it. And I know what you went through those two weeks because for two months during that depression I talked about the last time I was on the show, I was just going to gigs going, well, I'm going to be dead like, in like, you know, in a week. Like, so when you're, when you, those two weeks when you're living life and you're trying to go walk around, it, it's always oh, I'm picking my daughter up. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. You know, yeah, am I even gonna get to see you be too? Oh my you know, god, like, oh, dude! God. And Every you just spiral. You spiral. What did you do? What did you do when you first walked out of the hospital? Did you do any? What did you do that night? I do cried. you remember? Did you? Yeah, I cried. When you I cried. walked out of there, I cried. You I cried. got in my car. And I sat just... down. I thanked my dead father. My dead. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Anybody I thought might have been somewhere else, fucking throwing something. In. I was thanking you. You, the you, you were just going. Yeah, I was so grateful and. That night, um, I think I had my daughter that night, and I just sat with her, and I had dinner with her, and that to me was celebrating life, yes, you know, together. And then since then, I, I mean, I'm still, I'm back in EMDR therapy again, but I always do therapy. I journal every morning and every night. 
Um, I meditate. I, I should meditate more, but I do do it. Um, and I do two shows about mental health. I fucking anyone that sends me a hey, this is an interesting clip, or this is an interesting, yeah. especially when I'm on the road. If it's a 45 minute thing, I'll sit and listen to that. You know, so I'm yeah. always trying to I, look. I I'm insecure about the way I look, how I feel, shit like that. But the one thing I will put to, I don't go to the gym as much as I should, but I do work here. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. We all want to get abs and shit. Everybody's trying to look good and nobody's worried about working up yeah. here. And yeah. that's where I really, my later years, it needs to be here because. And, and, and you know, look at your success. And, and what I was saying was like, when my head is right, my success is, you know, we, we, we were so before pandemic too, I was talking about this with Tom Papa. You were on a hamster wheel. Got to do this, got to do this. It's like. Once things slow down and you realize like what's important, it's like, no, no, get your head right. That's it. And when your head's right, your body will get right too. That's right. You watch these fat motherfuckers, they're depressed. Yes. You know, you see a dude, like I seen it. Like you see a dude I, that's like 450. I remember somebody saying, look at somebody's house too. Look how they clean. Yeah. You see somebody's bedroom and you see their living room. When somebody's immaculately clean, they're just you're just better up here because. But when it's all a mess, that means you're you're, you're a mess. If you're if you're heavy and you're out of shape, you're a mess mentally. So I totally get that, man. And it's more important. I mean, the mentally, because once mentally everything comes down, It comes down. You That's know, that's right. Yeah, yeah, for it sure. It all sets in place, and I think a lot of people worry about. I mean, look, you got to work out too. Obviously, uh, muscles harder to break down when you get older and everything, so it's yeah. good for you. But I think a lot of people. People just go through life thinking, let me work on these biceps and these abs and shit. Yeah. Not, not my trauma, not this fucking incident that happened or what's going on in my life or how can I make this relationship better or, you know, what am I bringing to the table that's fucking shit up? You know, I, yeah. I don't think people look at that enough, especially guys like we come from an era like your father. My dad was a dude's dude, but. But I'll say this. I think that I know when my parents first split, because I would like to talk about your parents' divorce, but I know when they first split, we we did a family. I remember we were young too, second grade, maybe third grade going through this, and we did a family therapy session. And I look back on that now, and I think, well, I know my dad was there. We were all there. But yeah. I was like, huh, that's – so I've never been the a guy that's been like, I ain't going to therapy and talking yeah, to some dude. I've never been that macho bullshit, but I have been that way about medication. Yeah. So it's funny. Like for me, I'm not the guy that's like, I ain't going to therapy, but I was the guy that was like, I don't need a pill to fix this. But I remember talking to Christina Pajitsky and she's like, oh, I take whatever she takes and it's her business. And so I went on it and it's a low dose of 10 milligram. And it, it happened to me when we had to fucking homeschool. Like, my daughter at the time is five. She can't fucking read fully. She's not self I can't say, go do your shit, and I'll check it later. I have to sit there and do school with her. Yeah. And, dude, we're in a box, <laughs> losing our fucking, our art form goes away. Like, yeah. huh? Yeah. Wait, stand-up's gone? Which I'll come back to that in a second. But it made me lose my mind. I felt trapped. I had no outlet. I had sure. no anything to get any of this shit out. Yeah. Um, But... Going back to what was it? I just said I said I'll come back to the parents' divorce. Or? No, stand like like no one ever thought stand up would be gone. Oh right, right. But what I did realize because we always think I got to do this show and this show and this show. We had no stand up for a year and a half. Yeah, and and you know what? It was off. It was fine to uh, take that fine. break. Like none of us hustlers would have ever put a self imposed year and a half break on our stand up ever. ever. Ever we but, yeah, but it happened yeah, and it was all right. It was it was more than it was right. needed. It was, it was fine. It was needed. It was needed and because we're on that hamster. Even me out here, I'm out here shooting an acting project, and I literally got out here last minute. I didn't have anything booked, and the reason why I didn't have any shows booked is because I flew in last minute, open ended, not knowing when I'm flying back, exhausted with everything, and even my mind is like, oh, should I do shows? Maybe I should do shows. Where? And I'm like, whoa, 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 dude, whoa. It's gonna be all right. It's gonna be all right. Like, yes. you know, but but our mind, but pandemic let you realize that. That's right. You know, um, you mentioned med meditation, dude, and I tried it, and dude, I got so relaxed. You want to laugh? My comedic mind is on a lot. I, I mean, I can't. It's her. I the guy's voice. All I want to do is shit on the voice. No, no, and the stuff woman. It was, this, it was this Asian. Saying, yeah. This Asian woman was talking to me, and she was, and I was going, and she was going like, "You're fine. You're relaxed." And she goes, "From your head to now, start with your forehead." And she went from the forehead to the cheekbones to the fucking and i'm sitting there and it's going great right it's going great and i think i was you know i was fighting my wife at the time and she's going it down to your toes and then i just pictured that voice i go she's yelling at some dude later 
I go, some, some, yeah. some fucking dude's got <laughs> Jerry, I'm doing a session. <laughs> Like, I literally, I was laying, and it's funny, I'm laying in my son's room. There's like fucking Darth Vader shit. And I'm laying like this. And I just picture her. I go, she's going to yell at some asshole to go to the grocery store or he didn't get the right groceries. And I pictured that and my eyes open. My fucking eyes open. And I go, I go, I said baby carrots. God damn it, you're right. You little dick we, cock. So anyway. <laughs> Breathe deep. Notice your My mother your hated you from the beginning. <laughs> be present you in your body. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't shit. I want custody of the dogs. From Anyways, head, you feet. will be. You are a winner. <laughs> Anyways, you're a winner. <laughs> You'd be great if you heard you, of anyways yeah. in there. That's a meditation. How Italian is that anyway? So anyways. anyways. I love the ass on that though. No, it's, it's funny because oh, it, even it's funny because those meditation people have real lives. Mm -hmm. And you would think that that woman had her shit together, dude. And that's always talking like that, never yells, never gets upset, doesn't have anxiety. Yeah. Uh, Cussing out people in traffic <laughs> and shit. <laughs> Planes going down. We'll be fine. You're fine. <laughs> I uh, I try to make a rule now where my ego only comes in the car with me. You know what I mean? I try to I try to leave it in the car for yeah. meetings and everything else. Just leave it. Stay here. We can say whatever the fuck we want with these windows up, but stay here. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, you, one thing that I always liked about you, and I hit it off with you when we first met, is you're the type of dude that when I met you the first time, I knew no matter what you did in this business, you were going to be you. And and that, like, th that's who I kind of fuck with. Like, when I come out here, and a lot of comics come out to LA, and they're like, you got to do this podcast, do that podcast. I'm like, I'm kind of going to fuck with my friends. You know, like, I'm not... If I'm in this business to listen, there are some podcasts that, you know, you Absolute, should you should yeah, do. So I'm not trying to knock that hustle. But like I'm also not gonna I'm gonna be like, oh, Sickler's a friend. Like if you come to New York and you're like, hey man, like, what's up with the stand? I'm like, come to the stand. You know what I mean? Come to the stand. You know, or, or or what's going on with the, a podcast? Come, come, you know, whatever it is. Um I like to do like I like that because I feel like that's like an authentic thing. Now, if I meet somebody that has a or some or if somebody that I didn't know goes, hey, dude, I think you're real funny, man. I'd love to get you on my thing. That's different. But the whole like I got to get in that to do that. And I don't I don't like I've th never th that. No, no. And it's like you said before, like showing up to a place you're not booked on and going like, hey, it's like I'm not. No, it's like. No man, I'm gonna I'm gonna fuck with the people I want to fuck with me, and I'm gonna let my career because that's because nobody gave a fuck about me in this business for 14, 15 years, Same. and then and then yeah, then I got Montreal, then then I my first special did well, and people are like oh that dude's funny, and then this and that, and it's like I'd rather that organic kind of come up than the well, other. Well, it takes thing. longer our way because we're being true to ourselves and who we are. We're not coming out here to be anything but ourselves, and that road it's is always longer. always the longer one. And I was told that many years ago by friends and mentors. And I was also said like, but it's a better road. It is a better because road. the experience is there, that's and right. we've done so much, that's and right. we've been there, and, and and that's what it is. But uh, no, man, you're dope. Your show's dope, and you never changed. And and I like being around somebody because you could see somebody like I don't like when you see somebody show up and they got a dope podcast, but they've been doing stand up for six years, and then they're like, I'm the shit's like, yeah, Yo, you got a nice podcast. Like let's, you know what I mean, let's, let's see you do that. <laughs> Yeah, see you do doing an hour in fucking Toledo <laughs> yeah. is a little different. Yep. You know selling I mean? tickets is a different game. Selling tickets is a different Getting game. Getting up and doing spots is one thing, and being funny is one thing, but selling tickets in a major U.S. city is a different fucking thing. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot to being a comic. It's not just a 15-minute a spot at the cellar or the comedy store or the improv. It's can you do the 30? Can you do the hour? Can you go on the road? Can you sell the tickets? You know, it's yeah. all that shit. You know it's, it. It's all that. It's, it's yeah. All right, I want to ask you because um, my yeah. parents' divorce was a, a huge pivotal thing for me in my yeah. life too. And I, my mom cheated on my dad and like they tried to keep it quiet. But when you're arguing in front of the kids, you know, your kids you, aren't you, dumb. Yeah, you know, we're third, shit. fourth grade. We were like, oh, oh, mom, fuck somebody. Yeah. <laughs> somebody else. Oh shit, yeah. So what happened with your parents' divorce? It was, it was as it was. There was no, from what we understood. And by the way, I'm sorry to interrupt. Do you have siblings? I do. Okay, so how many of you are there? Well, so my my mother and father had me and my older brother. Okay. Then my mother and father divorced, and my mother remarried and has two. Two, so it's four so, years so, with her. Yeah, but they're my brother and right, sister, yeah, you know. So so there's there's four of us, two boys, uh, and then the youngest is our sister. And um so it was early eighties, man. 
my dad my dad's like a like a tough street smart kid but he What's also he educated he was educated so he like got like my father graduated high school and then didn't go to college for four years just like working in restaurants doing whatever making money bought himself a car and then somebody's like he can never do college and my father's like what my father went to like university of new maybe university of new mexico all a's came back home went to iona so like he's educated but he's also got that street shit but he's sicilian 100 percent, and catholic so divorce is no Right. It's a sin. It's the whole thing. Italians don't do that. Your mother went crazy. I mean, like that. So I was five. My brother was 10. My, my father was a big wig at AIG, AIG in, in, okay. the, in the city. And he had like a brand new 82 black Jaguar, like white leather. Like my dad was balling out. And they got divorced and everything just, dude, it was as bitter and brutal yelling fighting and then me and my brother in the middle and then this one saying this and this one saying that and it wasn't really civil at all and you know i do a joke in my act where my dad literally is like he can't believe or accept the divorce so he would he called us over i, I this line and came who out. wanted it was it a mutual my, no, my mother my mother mom did. yeah but my father would be like hey you know this divorce your mother did she went crazy this divorce your, your mother, mother did, did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and 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 uh <laughs> Yeah, this divorce your mother did, <laughs> and um, and and I saw so something that happened. Wow, here's a here's a, a heavy thing that I didn't think I would talk about. When my son was born, when my son Lucas was born, he's twelve now. The love that I have for this little boy had when he was a baby, and then now as as much if not it just keeps growing, right? But he's just he's my little boy, man, and like um he's like two three, and I started to get resentful. I start as I was great, my son. I started to get upset about what what was what I, what happened to me, and what happened to my brother. I started to get upset, and I remember and who a lot of like I would say my dad, dad my dad, my, my like my mom. Not that I, I can't give a pass, but like I, like it was just a different thing. Like it was more visceral from that side. But he didn't really. But my dad and I are cool, and and I, I had to talk to him because it was something where he was like. Call him, I mean, I hope he'd be cool with me saying this, but this is just honest. Like he would, um, yeah, he would like call and be like, I haven't heard from Paul. I pro and I noticed that I was even without even knowing being a little distant. And finally I sat and I just looked him in the face and told him when it wasn't going to be emotional. I made sure it wasn't going to be emotional. I made sure I, when I waited, I made sure I was just going to go in there and fucking talk. And I just had a good talk with him. And I was like, you know, this was done. And like, you know, I was just a kid wanted to hang with my, you know, hang, hang. And, and, you know, and, and when you're, have divorced parents and you're with your mom you just want to hang with your mom and when and when you just want to hang with your dad and it was so kind of it was so kind of harsh or and, and me and my brother my older brother christian man god bless him like he took bullets for me man he was 10 and he heard and saw some shit yeah. he saw some he saw plates you know flying he saw things he saw it and i'm this little kid who he kind of took bullets for but at the same time like it was kind of not cool what we went through and i think that that you develop issues later you know i was always sure. i was in insecure you know i was insecure because i didn't know if my you know my mom was safe i would wake up they said i'd wake up crying as a little boy and they'd be like what's wrong and my, and my what i would cry about was i think something's gonna happen to my mom that was because there was no that was and my stepfather's a great dude he was around but it was just because what what was happening with my dad you know your dad and stepfather get along no i was gonna say your no. if your dad's old school like that there's oh no, no. Way. the first time they were under the same roof was 22 years later at my wedding <laughs> is that right did they, they yeah, get along no. No. no didn't speak they didn't speak <laughs> not even a hello no, and a not even an acknowledgement <laughs> Not even an acknowledgement. Not even an acknowledgement. <laughs> <And you, laughs> but that's the same man your mom left your dad for married and she's still with him. Yes. And he yeah, was so it was and, obviously and, a right choice and, for her. And he was um, you know, with her through the cancer and all that stuff. And and I got, you know, nothing but, you know, stuff. How was your dad him. about that when your mom did he shift a little bit? Did he he just he did he, he just, soften up a he little just bit? felt he fell for us. You okay. know, he was just like, you know, like, I'm sorry, you have, to, you know what I mean? Right. Like he, you know, uh, but, but yeah, no. So it was like me and my brother were in the middle of some, some shit that was like, when you, when you, when, when I think back and I think about what was said and what was, I was exposed to. What stands out? I, I'll give you an example. I remember laying in my, my brother and I are twins. We had to share the same room. My little brother's in the room next to us. And I remember hearing my dad yell at my mom, like, you haven't had sex with me in six months. Listen, I remember that. Wow. And I was like, and I'm a kid at the time. I'm in middle school. And I'm like, 
man, I'm jerking it. And I'm thinking, six months of none of this? Holy shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I remember hearing that. And I'm like, God damn. And I'm hearing them yell and fight. See, what mine was not, mine, the, I was too young to hear the yelling and fighting because I was five. So, but it was the visitations. Now, mm. now the flip side is in my dad's defense, the courts only granted my dad eight hours on Sunday and three on Wednesday with us. That's so that we, old so, shit, so yeah. yeah, that was that old, you know, Wednesday, the women get yeah. that, that Wednesday, Sunday shit. Yeah. That was like by the book. Right. So he had eight hours with his boys on Sunday and three on Wednesday, which was only good for what, a dinner? Right. So his bitterness, I get, but it, 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 we felt it. You know what I mean? And, but Whereas, they live close by, so he was, always did. Okay, yeah, like like he would he lived close by, but yeah. like yeah, be like yeah, man, your mother went crazy. I don't know, I don't know. Did he you ever? Know, unfortunately, the devil invaded our that's family. It. That's what he said last night. The that's devil what he said. invaded our family. Yeah, that's my it. whole family in town. I called my cousin and told the him devil, that he was laughing. The devil, so hard. the devil came to us. What could I do? And 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 I'm, I'm fucking that's eleven. It. Yeah, right. So like so like <laughs> I, so team. like I'm like I live with the de- like so yeah so he's like I'm living. I live with the devil. Yeah, like I'm going to sleep at the devil's crib. Yeah, yeah. Like, like, I got, I, 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 the devil bought me fucking my sneakers for school tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? The, 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 the devil, the, us. The, he can't accept the, it. He the, is the, like, the nah. The devil <laughs> bought me my fucking first day of school outfit. So, oh so that that's what that's what it was. And and, and he never remarried or anything. He's single. He is bachelor. now. No, he, he, is he, now. he okay. swore he never would. And then how old was lit, it when he remarried? He so now my dad. Right now my dad is gonna seventy three. So I think he remarried what like eight years ago or something. No shit. Yeah, they All would right. say he, they dated for years and years, and then they went on a cruise and got married. And you know, and and listen, man, I I I accept like my dad. My dad looked at me as like, hey man, maybe I didn't handle things. Right. You know, like it's, it was all like, it's. I, I wanted to ask you. Yeah. Yeah. How when you had to sit down with him, was he receptive Great. to it? Okay, the best. good. And 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 I love my dad, dude. And and I have a lot of things that my dad has. We have the same taste in food, the same taste in certain things. So like, there's a lot of him. But I think my insecurity and why. And here's the other thing: they had so the, another big blow is we had money. My dad was a big wig at AIG. We lived in a Tudor in Scarsdale, like off of Scarsdale, dude. You're talking like top shit in Westchester County, New York, like top shit Jaguar. I remember one time we were pulling out of the Jaguar. I never forget this. Remember you said, "Oh, we haven't had sex in six months." You never forget. I never forget this because my dad loved making people realize he was a fucking baller. We're pulling out, and uh, there were girls that lived across the street. I believe their names were Danny and Debbie, two little girls. And they go, "Where are you going?" And I rolled my dad's fucking Jaguar window down. I go, "My dad, we're, they're taking us to McDonald's." My dad goes, "Don't tell him that shit." Don't tell him we're going to McDonald's. Like he didn't want. He was like, "Oh, because that was low rent." Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he's like, he's going, he's going, going, we're going to fucking steakhouse. Yeah, yeah. He goes, Let me put that window up. Don't tell him we go. Like, and, and like, <laughs> yeah, he's like, you know, we don't, we, we, the verses don't, we eat, don't eat McDonald's. Eat what are we fucking animals? <laughs> right? Yeah. So he's like, I remember, he, <gasps> yo, Ryan, he got, he got, I remember specifically, he got angry. He's like, you don't tell me we're going fucking cheap burgers. You know, <laughs> you know what I mean? You ain't going to tell him that. that. Too much, and, man. and, uh, you know, so he had that thing. Like I said, the Jaguar, the whole thing. And then when that went away, me and my brother were with my mom broke. We were like in a one bedroom apartment, but she she would sacrifice good schools and a good neighborhood to be in a small apartment. So mm-hmm. we had a bedroom. Um, so I moved a lot a little bit after that. And that was that was tough. So I had to kind of and I think that's that's where the comedy was where comedy kind of sure. developed for me because I was be able to kind of fit in anywhere through jokes and stories. And they'd be like, oh, let Paul watch. So when I saw Eddie do Raw. And I and and I would imitate it, and people would watch Paul do this or watch Paul do that. And I was telling Tom Pop on his podcast too. I said, when my grandfather died. I was joking at the wake. I'm like seven, so I would deal with horrible things like that. So I think when my mother would move me, and it would be, and I would like, I would like get popular. Girls would like me. I play sports. I was like one of the kids. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden, I heard, my, I heard I'm going to move, and then I would be like low totem pole, and it would hurt my it hurt. So what would happen is I would have to get friends, but then when they met me. I think the comedy and I think the way that my my talent at the my gift yes. was was my gift was to be able to make somebody and a, and and I knew I had it cuz a lot of older kids liked me right. cuz older kids found me to be funny they were like yo this kid watch this shit so that was my that was kind of my way and now looking back I know why I do what I do you know had my parents stayed in that Tudor in Scarsdale and and me and my brother go to these big so my brother went to BU he went to a good school but had I not been distracted I would make Maybe have some fucking sales job, went to college, got a degree, do something. So I'll never look back and say, I love everything. You know, it I love- It has to go that way. 
Yeah, it's yeah. All the bad shit had to do had to play out exactly how it did for you to sit right there right now. And 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 that's 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 the amazing thing. And that's why I'm a I'm a very big believer in in that destiny. Yeah. I'm a very big believer. And I'll take this shit all the way back full circle. Is I believe I'm not saying it's because of this, but. I, I remember when I had that talk where I with, with whatever God I remember going look if get me through this and I'm gonna make the most of this year I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna bulldoze through that door and I'm gonna do things so then years later you know I gotta be honest with you I was I was sitting on this movie and I see all these people I'm not really allowed to talk about it but and I remember sitting there Monday I flew in Sunday I'm sitting there Monday and I'm looking around and I remembered that kid I was. I remember that kid that I was, and I'm going, I'm sitting on a fucking, I'm doing this. I'm doing and, it. And I got a special that's going to be on a major platform, and it's my second. And all of these peers that are amazing and these people are saying, dude, man, it's it's great. And wait for this thing to pop off. And and I'm, I'm, I'm literally going, I was that kid who just was moving, and I was the kid who, who you know, was just like, oh man, I hope he'll be teachers would tell my mom, man, I hope he'll be all right. People going, hey, we're kind of worried about him because, you know, the drinking and the party and all the stuff that I was doing was to, 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 you know, be attention and, and, and to be the party. And I wanted a good time because like, I felt like there was no stability anywhere else. Mm -hmm. So let this party and friends be the stability. Right. And, 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 but I found something and I was able to get to this, this place. And listen, I have a lot of work to do. I got to go further and further. Yeah, but you nurtured but, but, it. But, That's but, the thing. Uh, yeah. You so fucking nurtured it's that, amazing. that skill. And now, you're making other people feel good about their bullshit because we all have it man we all have it. we all have it yeah dude, this was a great i know we got to get you out of here this was a great fucking episode you got to catch a flight dude. thank you oh dude thank you for fucking making time i'll be me. honest with you this was one of my favorite things that i did all all week when i was here and i fucking acted so i just love talking to you and um yeah it's something you brought it out of me again because i didn't get to relive those days as as detailed yeah but uh thank you for having me thank and you for sharing, uh dude. anybody listening to this man if you want to see uh check me out i'll yeah, be in uh, tampa uh may was it fifth sixth seventh uh i'm going to be in Buffalo Helium May 26th. I'm going to I'll be at San Diego Comedy Company uh end of June and more dates are being added. Go to paulverzi.com. Please uh like, subscribe the Verzi Effect podcast. It's growing. I got a studio now in New York. Also anything better that I co-host with Bill Burr and uh thank you uh, anybody who who likes this and subscribes to my YouTube channel, all that and get me on social media. Follow me at Paul Verzi. That's V I R Z I. I had a blast. Yeah, and check out Paul's last episode here on The Honeydew. As always, RyanSickler.com, Ryan Sickler on all social media. We'll talk to you all next week.